not been able to generate the two largest plays of the season, the 64 yarder, 52 yarder. Uh, I guess as you kind of go into the second half of the season, what do you think is starting to kind of click a bit in terms of uh, attempts and executions? Yeah, man, we're each week's different. You know, there's some injuries that take place, new guys in new positions or guys that are getting back from injury. So, you know, taking it week to week. It, it, seems, it seems like there was really a concern for us to get out of the ball when it was jet sweep, um, some of the runs and obviously the pass play. I mean, we'll run into that. And how is Albert, how did you see kind of Albert respond to the first half of the season not, not really getting as many touches as maybe he would like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's there's amount of touches during the game that can be distributed. So they did a good job of, of uh, you know, defending Mike in the game. And uh, we noticed that pretty early. And uh, Albert took advantage of his opportunities. Is that kind of um, what you guys envisioned from Albert when you had the, started off with that training camp you had? And then obviously things kind of got you a little derailed with an injury or two, some drops when you did come back in. But it's kind of what you really envisioned. You can, you can, you can, you can yeah, we have a lot of faith in him, and you know we, we expect him to perform his role when it's when he gives him the opportunity, and he did a good job of it. You know, um, you know, big play at the end of the game, big play to start the game. You know, so he we, we expect that from him. So uh, you know, it's all based on opportunities he gets. Mike, I guess he well, didn't have a catch, but um, I'm, he still really has a big impact on the game. How he affects his coverage here. I think I think when you ask any defensive coach that Mike Kosecki is a part of their game plan, so I'd say yeah. yeah. I had a quick question specifically just from um, one or two of those plays came off versus Purdue. How do you, as a as a you know, offensive coach, kind of view that? Do you view that like, hey, that's a given me that we have to just kind of we just have to get it, or do you say, hey, we kind of influence the, the defense? Yes, there's a little bit of both, you know, it's I the beholder on those, you know, so whether it was affecting the defense or, you know, they had a miscue, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into each one of our plays. So um, we got guys moving around, guys in motion. So there's a lot that, you know, maybe defense has to digest before the snap. How much of a, I guess, bind or stress does it put on you guys when Jacoby goes down with the injury for a bit and all of a sudden you have two of these in there. He said he didn't take any first team reps, yeah. he didn't take much. And now you have to kind of change the play call. I mean, what goes into that and how yeah. you adjust on the fly? I mean, offense is about execution, and it's about um, being consistent, and it's about you know building a cohesive unit, whether it's communication up front with the line or to the skilled players. So whenever one piece is missing or multiple pieces or you're on to, you know, for example, the center, we're, we're on to a third center, there's some variables that take place. And so uh, we're trying to – you know, navigate our way around those and, and make sure that we give our guys the best game plan to go out there and execute. Our guys did a good job on a short week executing versus a good team. So, um, you know, credit to the to, to our unit for, for responding with some of those, you know, let's call it the variables that take place. Now, I know you won't, I know you won't tell me, but it did seem like you guys had some wrinkles, some new wrinkles on the short week. Um, just, just philosophically, you go to a short week, I mean, do you normally is it thinking like, hey, we're going to stick to our bread and butter and what we're good at? Or is it thinking maybe so also like, hey, it's a short week. We can kind of throw some stuff in that maybe we haven't shown and that's mm -hmm. best out and throw for the other team to scout on the Yeah, probably see both, you know. But that, that's how I'd answer it, you know, a little bit of both. You know, as much as we can do to to get yards and move the chains, I think that that's kind of the angle we're going to take, you know. I know Tua is or was limited and what he can do. How much of the playbook do you have to push to the side to talk to that? Yeah, if, if we look at it in practice and maybe, you know, there's an issue with with what's happening there, then then we might have to, you know. Um, but he was able to uncork a big play to Jalen down the sideline. You know, that was a that was one that I'm sure challenged, you know, the finger and, and uh, getting that thing back to normal. So of uh, Jalen did a good job getting open, and Tua put it right where he needed to, right on the sideline. So, you know, there's, there's definitely that's what practice is for to find out what we do best going into the game. Did, was that play a play that you thought he could do, hoped he could do, or did it just surprise you that he did it? No, I mean we called it to be executed. So, you know, when it was when it was executed, you know, we went through the week knowing kind of where his limitations were or weren't, and um, you know. Fortunately for him, it was a it was a well-executed play because you know, like 
like during a normal week on a Thursday, you know, there's not many actual, you know, reps that take place just because of a quick week and coming off a game. So, you know, he was able to execute that play, you know, having not really executed that full speed. Thursday must be, Thursday night games must be hell for an offensive coordinator. Yeah, I mean, it's a good observation. And, you know, <laughs> that's, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, that's part of everybody goes to it. So, you know, every coach, every player, you know, and it's nice to, to have the, the Friday, the Saturday, you know, after it. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's a credit to our guys to executing and, and getting a victory, you know, a good team victory. I mean, our, our part is really taking it, you know, from, from the training room. And then when the training room gives the, you know, the green light to see what, what it's like, then we go out there and run them through a few plays or, you know, not, not necessarily team plays, but just, you know, kind of on air seeing what he can throw. So, you know, we have good communication back and forth. Tua did a good job of explaining what, what he can and couldn't do. So, you know, all that plays into when we play a player, especially as they're coming back from injury, you know, no matter what position. How much of a challenge has it been constant back and forth between the quarterback who you've had to play as a play caller? Um, just, you, know, I mean, you mentioned a little bit earlier, but uh, just, you know, yeah, I mean it's a, it's it's really all positions with you know up front with the line to you know running back. We've had an injury. We've had you know the injuries at quarterback and receiver. Obviously, uh, tight ends have been pretty healthy, which uh, you know knock on wood there. But um, that's that's just part of the NFL, you know. And um, obviously, at the end of the season, you like to be at your healthiest and 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 improving. And you know we're we're at a point now where we're, we're you know, trying to improve each game, you know, with whoever's out there.